What is good friends, we are back with more smoke on Snake Drift. We got Sidumas playing for the Cobras versus the Brazilian Mansmith. This is not Mansmith, Mr. Jamvet. He plays for the Melodics. And we will look at the teams. This is gonna be a Megalopani squad with either this or this Choice Scarf. If I would build a team, I would probably make this Scarf because you want a bulky Landers on this team. You have no ground resist, which means Zygarde is a threat. Then um, I think this is gonna be SD Garchomp with Rocks and Z-Move, either Dragonium or Continental Crush. Uh, Spadef Ferrothorn with Spikes, Leech Seed, Power Blast move could be T-Wave, I guess, because he's kind of weak to Mega Alakazam and you want T-Wave to cripple Alakazam. Or maybe you want, or maybe he also has some attack investment if he doesn't have T-Wave to Oko Alakazam. That could also be it. Rotom, if Pharaoh is not T-Wave, Rotom could also be T-Wave because he's really weak to Alakazam. I could also see the low pony being Fake Up plus Quick Attack because he's just so weak to Alakazam. And yeah, I mean, if Landris is. Scarf, then Kartana would probably be banded. Or if Kartana is Scarf, Landris could be a bulky variant or Z move variant. No, I think Garchomp is definitely a Z move variant, yeah. So I guess the Landris could be defensive if the Kartana is Scarf. And yeah, Rotom is important in this match to keep healthy for the Mega Scissor on Mansmith side. If that's a SD Scissor, that can actually kind of run through Sidumas' team. Um, yeah, just depending on some of the sets, obviously, if Garchomp has a fire move for it, that could help Sidumas. Uh, I don't think he's gonna have a move on low pony to hit Scizor. He's probably just fake out high jump kick frustration. Last move, either Ice Punch or Quick Attack. And yeah, the Zewikun is probably gonna be sub because he has leftovers and terrain from Bulo to keep it healthy. Sub Scald, Protect, the last move could be Common or Toxic. At first glance, I would assume that he's Scarf Landris and then Rocks on Tren. Uh, the Bulu does does not have to be Spadef on this team because you can also check uh, Alakazam with these two, especially with the Scizor. So it could also be an offensive type of Bulu. Which, yeah, the move is either on this or this is what I'm thinking at first glance. So Coco lead was Rotom. Sidumas doesn't want to stay in here. Rotom is important to keep healthy uh, as it can check not only the Heatran, it can also deal with the Scizor, kind of, even though Burn got nerfed and the SD Scizor can potentially set up on Rotom. But he definitely doesn't want to stay in here, so... He's just gonna switch on to Ferrothorn. Does Mansmith predict and go for Volt Switch? He does just go for T-Bolt, which is understandable because he didn't have a good switch in for Rotom. And yeah, he just wanted the most damage he could get. Now he hard switches out, which kinda tells us he probably has U-turn and he doesn't want to take Iron Barbs. Um, so Ferrothorn gets up a spike now. Sidumas could pull the switch here into Rotom or he could stay in. If he stays in, he's most likely gonna go for Leech Seed. And he went hard Landris, which means maybe he's not Scarf Landris, because I don't think he would bring a Scarf Landris out on a Ferrothorn, because Ferrothorn just beats Scarf Landris really easily. So he's Rocks Lando, which means he might not be Scarf, because Scarf Rock sounds really bad. I know that has been used sometimes, and I've also used it myself, but it's like you only use that if you have to use it, Scarf Rocks. It sounds really bad. So he might just not be Scarf Landro, which means one of the two Tapus might be the Scarfer, or he just doesn't have a Scarfer. We'll have to see that later. Um, so now, if he's not Scarfed, he can go for U-Turn here. But um, he might not want to do that as well, because if Ferrothorn stays, stays in, he takes Iron Barbs. So he could also double switch out here. I um, mean, Siduma's safest play is probably just going into Rotom. Or if he... Um, yeah, he could also just stay in and get up another Hazard, I guess. That's also a fine play, in my opinion. Um, because even if this Landers is a SD of Zemo for some reason, which I don't think it is, Zemo is probably on one of the two Tapus. I don't think he was. I don't think Mansmith was gonna stay in there because he's leech seated. So he goes for U turn. Sidumas goes hard low pony, which means he either predicted him to go for SD, and then he can threaten him out with the Ice Punch the next turn, or he predicted him to double switch into Heatran, uh, predicting the Ferrothon to stay in, because low pony would have covered the Heatran switch. So he either predicted that, or he predicted the SD, and then could have threatened him with the Ice Punch. But I think he predicted him to double into Heatran. But Mansmith um, didn't care if he takes Iron Barb, so he just U-turns. I mean, I wasn't sure about his set. Now we know confirmed that he's not Scarf Landris. Uh, so he goes on the Tabu Bulu, and yeah, Sidumas is forced out here. I mean, he can fake out first, get some chip on the Bulu, and get his crazy turn recovery on the low pony. But then they'll turn after, he's um, gonna be forced out. And he also doesn't have great answers for this Bulu at all. Ferrothorn and Kartana both get hit hard, get hit decently hard by his superpower. So he might, like after he fake out here, he might want to pivot into the Landris the next turn, anticipating his superpower. Um, yeah, I don't think Mansmith is gonna SD. Also, we don't know, like the Scarfer might be the Coco or the Bulu. 
which sounds bad, but that's pretty much what it has to be, I feel. Or he just doesn't have a Scarf because he has priority on Scissor, but I think he still has a Scarf. So he goes Landry's there, anticipating his superpower to come out. As Mansmith goes for superpower, so Sidomas gets the read right. He didn't want one of his Steel Taps, Kartana or Ferrothon to get barbed by his superpower. It was unlikely that he was going to SD there because if he SDs um, as Sidomas goes into Kartana, then he gets threatened out by Smart Strike. So I assume you see a U turn here um, or Rocks. No, 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 Rocks are on the chomp, right? So yeah, he just U turns to get momentum on the opposing Landry's. Um. So, Kartana can come out here most likely and threaten him out. Yeah, exactly. And, well, he showed U-turn on his landers, which means... Yeah, we still don't know confirmed, but that damage only did 6. Not quite sure if that's offensive U-turn damage. It might also be bulky Scarf landers to check Zaga a bit better. But, yeah, um, I think Sidomas is probably gonna... I was just gonna say that Se Sacred Sword, because he wants to predict the Scissor to come out. Yeah, because Sacrosol hits the Scizor and the Heatran. Because Mansmith, like, if he stayed in there, he would have gotten blown away, like, by a Leaf Blade boosted in Grassy Terrain. I think that's Bandit Kartana, because it did 21 to the Landris, which seems like a lot. So Coco comes out here. Um, I would probably pull a double here in the Heatran if I'm Mansmith, predicting the Ferrothon to come out. Um, unless he has U turn or Volt Switch, but he just HPS is there in case Sidimus wants to go into Guard Chomp. I don't think Sidimus was ever going Guard Chomp or Landris. I think Ferrothon was kind of always the play. So he should have doubled, or he should have like Volt Switched if he has it. I don't think he has Volt Switched though, because he would have gone for it earlier. So now Heatran can probably go for Toxic or Magma Storm here. And I'm pretty sure it has to be Magma Storm Heatran on this team, because it helps Suicune trap Toxapex and get rid of Toxapex with Magma Storm Taunt. Uh, probably Toxic and Earth Power, since the Landers revealed rocks. I assume that's the moveset on the Heatran. So now Mansman has to switch here, uh, most likely into Landers. And Sidomas can get up his rocks if he hasn't gotten them up yet. Yeah. yeah, he can get his rocks up here, or he can weaken the Landris with um, SD into Z move. He can probably destroy the Landris, or he can also just heart attack. Um, but yeah, Mansmith is not gonna stay in this. Heatran is quite nice. Um, just toxic the Chomp, can potentially toxic the Rotom later in the game. And yeah, I mean, the Scizor kind of has to be like mixed defensive on Mansmith's team with some Spadef investment because he's like. He's not Spadef Tran, and. His Bulu is offensive, it seems, from the superpower damage it did to the Landris. I'm not sure what type of Bulu it is just yet. It might be Z move or Scarf. So he goes hard for Connor and Crush, just wants to weaken something. Um, either the Scizor or the Lando. Gets to weaken the Landris right there, and now we're gonna either see a switch from Sidomas or we're gonna see the rocks go up. A switch would be into Rotom or Ferrothorn. Yeah, or just get up the rocks. That's also a potential play. If you just, just throw them up, Men's mid U turns, anticipating the Rotom most likely to come out. Gets a Scizor in and. Wait, he's not Defog Lander, so is he Defog Scizor? There's no way, dude. Defog Scizor is awful. Please don't tell me. Cinemas just goes into Rotom, which can take like any hit. And he is Defog Scissor, which is I'm not a big fan of that set. Now Rotom can threaten out the Scissor with a Will O Wisp, so Mansmith um, is probably gonna have to hard switch out here. He doesn't want to stay in and let the Scissor get burned. Okay, so he's not SD Scissor. That's like kind of good for Sidomas because SD Scissor could have destroyed him. Like it could have like just like kind of six would him if it was played correct. Like not hard six would, but it was a huge threat. Um, I feel like he kind of has to go in his Tapu Koko here, anticipating the Will O Wisp. And Sidomas could potentially predict that and go for Hydro Pump, Hydro Pump or Volt Switch. Um, Volt Switch to grab momentum or Hydro Pump to get good damage on the on the Coco. I uh, might also try to pivot into Heatran on the will -O wisp and then get a Toxic on the Rotom. Yeah, I think he's either going Heatran or Coco anticipating a Wisp. If I'm Sidomas here, I would either pump or Volt Switch. He's definitely he's never staying in with the Scissor and letting it get burned to get a slow U-turn. That's just not the play. And especially if Coco has some bulk investment, I can probably take Pump decently well. Um, let me run a Calc. Yeah, he's just never staying in here, so... How much does Rotom do to Coco with a Pump? Uh, why is there no Rotom Wash in the card? It does 55 to 65 if the Coco has no bulk. That's actually kind of a lot. If it has bulk, it does 53 to 63, so he doesn't go into Coco, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, he's either going Heatran or Coco there. So now... He misses a pump, which sucks for Sidimas, I would have done a lot. And yeah, if I'm men's mid here, I would just probably double into Heatran and expecting the Ferrothon to come out. Oh, no, actually... He does just T-Build. 
Um, I guess that was a fine play for Sidumas because it was a fine play for Sidumas in the sense that he now knows that the scissor is not SD, the scissor is just a defog variant. And that Coco did 46 to the Rotom. Um, this now gives Sidumas a switch into his Ferrothorn or his Scarf Landris. Yeah, I think it's Scarf Landris the way it has been played, and the Kartana definitely seems to be banned from the damage it did um, to Mansmith's Landris. But yeah, let me just call it how much that Coco did to Rotom. Uh, it's obviously not specs. Um, the Kalk still has specs Coco in it, but it's usually never specs anymore. The, the, um, yeah, Tebow does 55 to 65, so it's not max special attack Coco. Or the Rotom has some spadef, yeah. The Rotom has some spadef investment on Sidumas side, which um, I guess is a secondary Ash Grant check outside of the Ferrothorn, and it can help him take a hit from Blacephalon a bit better and from Alakazam if he has some spadef on Rotom. So he might be spadef with T Wave to help with the Alakazam matchup. So he goes on the low punny, which was obviously a fine play as well. I didn't think about that as fir at first. Um, can threaten out the Coco here. Mansmith is going to have to switch out. It's most likely going to pull out a switch into his landers and just sack it off, I feel. Because uh, this scissor is at 72%, which means the scissor could get bobbed here if he breaks it and goes for high jump kick. So I think he's just going to sack the landers. And um, I don't know if Frustration kills the Coco from this range, but if it kills, then we're just gonna see most likely a Frustration as you guys just go no banners to sack it off, most likely. Frustration comes out, yep. Uh, let me run the color, so Tapu Coco versus Low Pony. Um, yeah, Frustration does 68 to 80.4, so it was a roll in Sidumas' favor. It was also unlikely that the Coco was staying in there. Um, well, I guess if Coco was Scarf, it could have stayed in, but I don't think it's Scarf, which means it might be Scarf Bulu, which sounds really bad, but Lando was not Scarf. Coco's most likely not Scarf either. Um, so, probably goes for Superpower again, breaking the switch. Yeah, exactly. He was. The Lando's has already chipped a bit, and since the Bulu is. Um, that's actually not Adamant Bulu, so. That might be Jolly Scarf Bulu, because that superpower didn't do much, considering the Pharaoh's one is probably Spadef that actually did nothing. Um, this is still fine for Sidumas because he gets Grass Terrain and Leftovers back. Now he can switch into his Guard Trump or Rotom. Uh, most likely Guard Trump. And yeah, Mansmith can probably just fire off a Magnus Storm to weaken the Guard Trump a bit. Well, not even weaken, he gets rid of the Guard Trump. I forgot that the Guard Trump was this low. If he hits the Guard Trump, he's gonna go down to Toxic plus the secondary effect. I forgot that he was that low, but yeah, Lopani can threaten this out with a high jump kick now. And uh, Mansmith is obviously going to switch out here. If he has Protect, that would be cool, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't have it. Um, so what's the switch into the high jump kick at this point? Suicune is going to take a lot, dude. Like, that's not a great switch. And it's going to take like 40-ish, 40 45. So you get some leftover with Postgres Terrain on the Kuhn. Um, Sidumas might just click Frustration here because you don't want a high jump kick into a potential Protect from the Suicune. So yeah, let's just click Frustration in case the Suicune has Protect and gets a crit, which is annoying for Mansmith. Does he get the burn? He does not get the burn. That sucks, because if he didn't get crit there, he probably could have lived the next hit. Um, if he clicked Protect the next turn. I think he predicted him to go for Frustration, because it's kind of obvious that Suicune runs Protect, so he didn't go for Protect. And he would have been like at 30-ish now without the crit, and then he could have protected the next turn potentially. Or he might just not have Protect, and I'm... Um, Overthinking things. Crit is still a little bit annoying because he might have gotten another chance to burn something. So Scissor can come out here and roost. Or I guess the Bulu might come out. Um, just depends if it's Scarf, but it might just be Scarf Max attack Bulu. Um, Jolly, because that superpower definitely did like nothing to the Therothorn. So yeah, either Scissor or Bulu is going to come out here to threaten out the low pony. I think the Scissor is at 60 ish after the spike. So Bulu comes out. And I think you'd always go Landris here if you see the must because the Ferrothon is already chipped. So you can't really afford to go Ferrothon on a superpower. And Landris is healthy enough to live a Horn Leech now that we now he knows that the Bulu is jolly and not adamant right from the damage it did earlier. So I see Mansmith reads that and goes for Horn Leech, which covers Lopani staying in and covers the Landris, but that's completely fine for Sidumas. Like he could eat that up at only 39. And now Sidumas is free to just go for U-turn and get momentum. Uh, Mansmith is gonna have to switch out here. Um, I guess he might go Scissor, he might also go Heatran anticipating the U-turn. But yeah, either Scissor or Heatran is probably going to come out here. And Cinemas is just going to use him to grab that momentum up. 
And then if Scissor comes out, um, he can go Rotom. If Heatran comes out, he can go Low Pony. So I assume he just clicks U turn and Mansman goes into Heatran, gets takes some spike damage. So Low Pony can now come out, get some Grass Train Recovery. And just hit high jump kick, um, not like he has a great switch in, and even this, if this has protect for some reason, which I don't think it has, um, it will not kill the low pony because it's healthy enough. But yeah, high jump kick is free here, Immensement is going to have to switch out, probably into hard type of Bulu, because he got all the health back since he went for Horn Leech earlier, so it's fine to go Bulu, yeah. And yeah, we see Grassy Train goes first on the Bulu, before the low pony, confirming that it's Choice Scarf. So I, I would just Horn Leech again, breaking the Landris, but because um, I don't think Thidomas is sacking his Feral Thorn when the Coco is still alive, so it was really obvious to me that he was going to go Landris there, but he's super powers trying to predict the Kartana or the Feral Thorn, and yeah, Thidomas can just U-turn again, yeah, I feel like he was always going Landris, um, and the Band Kartana also looks really scary for Mansmith with Scissor being chipped a little bit, he has to be careful that he doesn't get bought by Sacred Sword in the late game, but yeah, I assume we're just gonna see a U-turn again from Sidomas here. And either a switch into Scissor or Heatran. This is pretty much repetitive. Uh, so Heatran comes out, which means either the low pony or the Kartana can now come out from Sidomas' side. Because Kartana this time gets some grass to terrain back. And I think he just has no He just clicks Sacred Sword here. And like Mensmith does not have a good switch into Sacred Sword. Yes, his two Tapu is resisted, but they will still take a lot. Coco will still take like 45 or 50-ish, and Bulu will also take a lot. Uh, how much would Bulu take? Maybe a bit less than Coco, maybe like 40. My Sacred Thought is pretty free here for Cedomas. Um Also, yeah, he would not go out into the Katana here if he wasn't banded, because I think Scarf might actually not kill the trend from here. So he's definitely banded, we already know that, I think from damage that I did to Lander earlier. The 21 with the Sacred Sword to Landris, which just seems banded to me. Like, if it's not banded, that would be really weird. So the land was definitely scarfed then on Sidomas side, which means he was quite weak to Zygarde, but his opponent didn't bring one, so he was fine in that regard. And yeah, he might have Ice Punch on the low pony now that I see how weak he is to Zygarde. But yeah, Mensmith's timer is going down, Sacred Soul is going to come out here, he's going to have to decide what he wants to go out to, because Nakoko is going to do like 45-ish. That's 50, wow, that's some huge damage. Um, so Sidomas is going to switch out here most likely into Ferrothorn and Mansmith is probably going to roost, I guess Landris is also a potential play for Sidomas predicting the roost to come out or the T-Bolt because Mansmith is not going to HP this turn, he's either going to roost or um, like go for T-Bolt or whatever he has. Wait, this could also be Z-Move Coco, what Z-Move would it be? Gigavolt Havoc or I don't know, but he goes hard Landris anticipating the roost. Uh, Sidomas is free to go for U-turn even if Mansmith stays in. And I guess he could be Shuka or Z-Move, but I think he just breaked the U-turn he stayed in. Uh, might also be Shuka though. Brave Birds, hello? So he doesn't have Hidden Power Eyes. No, he already revealed Hidden Power Eyes. He revealed Brave Bird, Roost, Hidden Power Eyes, and T-Bolt. So is he Supersonic Sky Strike or is he Giga Bolt Havoc Coco? I'm pretty sure Z-Move Coco at this point, because his Scarf Bulu already revealed. Um, but the yeah, Z-Move is free to either go for Leech Seed or for Attack as he reveals the Sky Strike. <laughs> he was at minus one, so that did absolutely nothing to the Ferrothorn. <laughs> Hello, what was that damage? And Sidumas is free to just throw the Leech Seed here after he got up that spike. Each one comes out, the Ferrothorn is gonna get back healthy to 40-ish percent, 47 here. And now he can go out into his Rotom most likely. Um, Mansmith could potentially predict that and pull out a double into his Bulu, anticipating the Rotom to come out as he does double into Bulu, predicting the Rotom. So good play there on Mansmith's side as Sidomas just plays it safe, goes into Rotom. Uh, Rotom has no leftovers, which means it's probably the Berry variant. And um, yeah, Sidomas just gonna have to switch out here, probably back into Landris. And Mansmith is either gonna, probably just gonna click Hornage to get some health back because the spikes are getting his Bulu low. So there is the Horn Leech, kills the Landers, and now Kartana or Ferrothorn is gonna come out, one of the two, because he's locked into Scarf Horn Leech. Uh, I assume we're gonna see the Kartana, though that kinda, that kinda has Sidomas in a tough spot because he has to predict here. Um, well, I guess he can just Sacred Sword, what am I saying? No, Sacred Sword is free, I don't know what I was thinking there. Mm. Yeah, Sacred Sword was free, I don't know what I was smoking, but now... Bulu comes back in, threatens out the Kartana, and I'm not really sure what Sidomas can even switch into this, he kinda has to sack something, 
Mansmith is obviously forced to go for super power, and let me calc if that kills the Kartana. Um, I feel like Sinumas might just sack the Rotom because the Coco is already dead. But yeah, let me just calc Tabu Bulu. Um, dude, they give me time to calc. Tabu Bulu versus Kartana, yeah, he just sacks the Rotom, he didn't need it anymore. Superpower does 87 to 103 to the Kartana. If it's adamant, but it's jolly, I think. So there was actually a roll to kill the Kartana, but there was no reason to stay in because Kartana kind of wins. So now Kartana or... Thing is, this is tough for Sidomas. Yeah, Kartana comes out, but this is like not so easy for him because... Yeah, Superpower would have done 80 to 94 earlier. He's at minus one. Psychic Sword ignores boost, which means the Bulu, Bulu's defense bo drop also gets ignored. So if he Psychic Sword here, is the Bulu stays in, Sidumas is in a rough spot. Um, I don't think Mansmid would stay in and risk the Bulu dying to a smart strike. Or, or Leaf Blade, I think it would also die to Leaf Blade potentially with the minus one and the Kartana being banned in terrain. The obvious play here is him switching out into Scissor or Heatran. So Sacred Sword seems like it makes sense for Sidumas. Like, I would probably Sacred Sword if I'm Sidomas, but it's risky because if he stays in, um, Sacred Sword doesn't do much to the Bulu because the Bulu, um, Sacred Sword ignores drops, which means Sacred Sword would only do 19 to 20, no, that's not Bandit, my bad. So if it's Bandit, it would do like 28, yes, 29 to 34 if it's Bandit if the Bulu stays in. Um, yeah, so I mean he can live a super power from the Bulu because the Bulu is at minus one So I think Sacred Sword is always the play here even if the Bulu stays in for some reason as he goes Heatran and yeah He does Sacred Sword Predicts Heatran slash Scissor to come out just pops it and now Zidum is in a really good position because if the Bulu comes back out It has to take spikes it's super low and Super power is still a roll to kill the Kartana. It does 80 to 94 So that's actually a roll in Zidum's favor for um, I still don't think he would risk the roll with his Kartana. Well, well, no, never mind. Yeah, never mind. I don't know. What, I'm mixing up my words here. He might have. Does he risk the roll? Yeah, I think he just risks the roll, right? I mean, Mansman is forced to click superpower here. Um, it does 80 to 94.6, so it's in Sidomas' favor to lift this. And if he lives it, I think he just wins. Because plus one Sacred Sword. Um, Choice Bandit kills Tapu Bulu at this range after spikes. And even if Kartana goes down, then he can go into... Well, actually, if Kartana goes down, this could be tough for Sidomas. Because the Scizor... Um, the Scizor is at, like, six, fifty high 50s. As he does get a low roll. It did 78. What? Mineral, mineral is... The fuck? Mineral is 80 on showdown. How did he do 78? I guess the katana has some bulk investment. Oh, he's maybe not max attack on the Bulu. But yeah, if the katana went down there, the scissor could have potentially... Well, maybe the scissor could not have won because the Ferrothan can leech sit the scissor. And he can still annoy the scissor because it's not an SD scissor. Like if scissor was SD, it definitely won the game. If the katana went down there, I think. Unless low pony pulls up with a random fire punch. But he knew that the scissor wasn't SD, so he could have still annoyed the scissor with... Um, and now he just wins with Sacred Sword, because that bullet punch doesn't kill and he's plus two bandit. So, um, yeah, at the end I was kind of confused for some reason. I don't know why. But yeah, Sidumas takes the win. I didn't like this game too much overall. I mean, it was a fun game, but I didn't like their teams is what I'm trying to say, kind of. Scarf Bulu is, like, weird. And Skystruck Coco is interesting, to say the least, because it can lure in Bulu. Um, but it's still odd. Like, the the thing that annoyed me the most is the Scarf. And um, not this. Yeah, Scarf Bulu was annoying, and then he had Defox Scissor and not SD. That also annoyed me. And Sinuma's team looked really weak to Zagat or Alakazam, but he didn't face those. Well, he might have something for Zam, like T Wave, like I said, but he looks really weak to it on paper. But yeah, Bennett Za um, Kartana pulling through. I thank you guys for watching. I'll see you with more tournament coverage later, and peace out, friends.